Hi guys, welcome to this seven workshop and I'll be taking you through a journey where we're going to learn how to play Congolese seven. It's a very rhythmic style of music, very energetic and I'll be teaching you how to play on the bass. But I also got a band with me to show you a little demonstration of what modern seven sounds like and after that we'll be going through some of the key elements that really make the style of music, especially how to play on the bass to really get the feel. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video demonstration that you just saw with the band playing seven. Right now, I want to start talking about some of the key elements that go into playing seven on the bass. But before that, I just want to tell you guys that when you're going to try practice at home, it might be difficult to get the feel because when we're actually playing seven, I'm actually vibing off the music, the energy that I get from my colleagues, you know, what they're playing, what the drummer's playing. There's really a harmony between the bass and the drummer playing that really helps to capture the feel of seven. But in terms of playing seven on the bass, there's actually one fundamental technique that really characterizes how to play seven. And this really gives the rhythmic essence, which is what makes seven. And this is what I want to teach you right now. So, by the way, as a prerequisite, this is a course for people that already know their way around the bass, so you know where the notes are. For example, this is C, this is G, this is A, this is C again, etc. The G string, D, A, and the E string. So these are the kind of things you need to know. Now, I'm gonna teach you how to play seven, and we're gonna be on the key of C. So I'm gonna play on this half of the fretboard around here this is C now there's a technique that I want to show you and this is what it looks like you need to pay attention to my right hand to see what's going on and it's pretty much this I'm using my index finger and my thumb so place your hand about here when I was playing actually in the demonstration shown before 
I played my hand about here, but this is a particular thing that I do in terms of the sound I want to create. But everybody should start by playing from around here. Place your middle finger here as support. And you want to be in this kind of position here. And I'm sure the camera is capturing this angle, so you'll be able to see. Now, what I want you to do is simply this. You're going to flick the bottom string like this with your index finger. And then you're going to play with the thumb like this. That's pretty much it. I'll put the volume up a little bit more so you can hear it. I'll do it slowly. A bit more in terms of let's follow a rhythm. Now, this seems very simple, but it's very important to understand this and how it plays part in playing seven on the bass. Why is this important? Because remember, like I said, seven is a fundamentally rhythmic technique. And this technique that we're learning here is capturing the rhythmic feel of the drums or the conga drums. So, you know, when you're playing the congas, you might play... Or you might play... Or when, you, when the drummer's playing the drums, there's a kick drum, there's the snare. This here captures the kick of the kick drum. That's what it's trying to capture. Imagine a drummer is playing. You see that? That's the feel that it's capturing. And it's very important while we're playing seven bass. Now let's put that in the context of playing some bass lines. On the fretboard, I also have something that, there's not a formal name for this because it's not a formal course that teaches seven, but it's what I'd call a pivot that helps you to guide the way you're kicking. When I'm talking about kicking, I'm talking about this technique that we just demonstrated. So I'll be here. I press this G here and then I press C. So try that. Now, after you've pressed that, you're going to play this. You see that? Let me go again. Now let me play a little bit fast for you to see what the rhythmic feel is really like once you learn how to do this technique. You can see it's very bouncy, it's very dancey, it's very energetic. And that's what really seven is about in terms of capturing that feel on the bass. Now we're going to add another element to our playing, which will be here. Let's break that down. Remember, you're using our pivot. I use the index finger. What's happening here is sometimes I mute while I'm playing the kick. You see that? My hand is just over the fretboard on this note. Now, if you play that quite fast, this is how it sounds like. This bit is a very difficult bit to get because you might think to yourself, well, how does that translate to everything else that you're doing? But it's a key important part because no matter what line you play, you always come back to this pivot and to this thump. So it's very fundamental. A demonstration of, of a line that I played while in the demonstration. <laughs> Whenever I'm playing any line I play, I always come back to that. The 
company kick. So in this first part, I really want you to show you the importance of this technique because it's fundamental to seven bass. <laughs> So give it a go and practice it and once you feel comfortable with it, you're now ready to progress to the next step. Now I hope you spent enough time practicing that technique, make sure you understand the pivot and the thump. Now how do you put this in the context of playing like a piece of music like you saw in the demonstration earlier on? Well, you know when we're playing music we have notes, we have scales and we have progressions. So seven music has characteristic progressions. That's why I said at the beginning that this is not for complete beginners, people who are very aware of the music, know their scales, know how to know the scale degrees as well. For example, on the key of C where we are playing, C is one, D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five. Now, the kind of progressions that are typical in Congolese seven music is a one, five, four, five. We call that trois temps. In English, you might say three temps, but <laughs> it wouldn't make sense. <laughs> But that's more for the francophone community. So it's a one five four five progression. We played that in the demonstration. Another typical is a one four five four. Another one is a one four one five. Now the demonstration in this course I'll be teaching you using the one five four five progression. One five four five. So in the key of C. If you understand your scales, you know that those notes translate to C, which is the one, G is the five, F is the four, G is the five. Back to one on the upper line here. So the progression is most commonly seven is also on a four by four in terms of the rhythm. If you wanted to count one, two, three, four, we're counting fours, pretty much everything. And we spend about two beats on each note. So this way it would sound like if you did one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So I'll be tapping my foot so you can see the rhythm and then you see how long I'm spending on each note. One, two, 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 one, two. Now, calling out the scale degrees, so that's the one, that's the five, that's the four, that's the five. One, five, four, five. One, five, four, five. So that's the progression that we're playing. Now that we know what the progression are in terms of the notes, what we want to do now is start to create bass lines around that. And then as we're creating the bass lines, we're always implementing that technique that we spoke of at the beginning. So, if you remember what I showed you at the beginning, we already did the first two parts, the one and the five. So we did this. You see that? So how I play the one is, I use this pivot, which is the G, which is the five of the scale degree as well. Now let's count the beat. Two, one. One, two, 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 one, two. See how that sounds? That's how what we're playing is fitting in terms of the progression. Now to go to the four, we'll do something similar. Now to go to the four, we'll do this. And then back to the five. So from the beginning to the one. Now let me play with my feet, keeping the tempo. Now if I'm to do this a little bit faster, 
to show you what it sounds like in real time if I was to play myself. So this is how it would sound like. <laughs> playing as well to see how it sounds like and it fits in with the one two rhythm in terms of how much mini beats we're spending along the rhythm one two 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 so there you go that's your basic seven progression on the bass at this point you've pretty much <laughs> got the essence remember the essence not everything that goes into it so hopefully you can practice this and sharpen it up and then we'll build on top of that i hope you spent enough time practicing that and you might find that your form is actually quite hurting <laughs> don't be surprised it's not in the natural i remember when i started playing bass and seven and bass so my form took quite the hit in fact, if you were to look closely at my thumb here, you'd see there's quite a bump there. That's just because the skin is hardened, you know, constantly thumping the base, using it as a kick. So it's natural. So don't be worried if your fingers are hurting. It's only part of the learning process. Now, what I want to do in this part is to show you now how we can fill the progression a bit more to make it sound a bit more interesting because I'm sure you guys don't want to spend the rest of the year just playing. There's a bunch of other things that I'm doing, but that's why I said it's important that you already know how to play bass because all that comes into how you construct your bass lines. Naturally, if you're playing another song, you're going to use some of those elements while you're playing. Now, how we're going to develop the bass line is keeping to the rhythmic essence. Now, I want you to imagine I'm playing the conga. Something like that. Now, I'm gonna play without using the thump technique that we've been talking about. Just using the notes to get that kind of feel. So you can hear what it sounds like. mimicking the congas here and the way we construct our bass lines one of the approaches is through mimicking the conga or the drum or the snare while we're playing so how does that sound like now with the thump i'm going to do it fast and then i'm going to do it slow <laughs> asking yourself the question oh you saw me go to this note why did I do that we'll get to that the important element is that you heard the sound that I'm creating with the bass and that creates that energetic and rhythmic feel which is part of seven so what did I do A little step up from what we did before so rather than doing i'm making it a bit fuller see that so to the one to the five and i'm pressing this d note here I'll just do it. And then I move, I slide my hands across the fretboard, I go here. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So slowly again. Now, finger placement is also important because I'm using a couple of variations. As you can see, while I'm playing seven, the finger that one of the fingers I'm using the most is my index finger. My what do you call this? Your pinky. Yes. <laughs> You're using your pinky and my thumb. These are very key because the pinky is used as the pivot. Remember, we introduced that before. The thumb here. I didn't mention this before, but it's important to mention it now. When I was doing this technique, the key thing to, especially to creating that sound was with the thumb. I'm always having the thumb here. Because obviously if I don't, that's what it sounds like. So maybe you didn't notice that, or maybe you ask yourself, wait, how's he doing that? Well, this was happening here on my left hand. It's important to keep it like this. And I'm not even pressing it hard, I'm just... I've got my finger over the string, just holding it in place. Might need to apply a little pressure because if you don't, you want to get it like this. That's the sound you're looking for. Remember the kick drum. So back to what we're playing, the bass line development. to sounding like a Congolese bassist. The important element to remember, the thump, the pivot, and getting playing those notes in a rhythmic manner, mimicking the conga, mimicking the drums, which is important. Now, to progress, add one slight final element. I want to add something that's a bit advanced, so you can see a taste of what it sounds like when you're progressing. And it will require a little adjustment. So let me play for you. That was the element. Remember, I told you, it doesn't matter what else I'm doing, I always come back to this element. So, what did I add? Remember our progression? One, five, four. Five with the thump. One, five, four, five. With the rhythmic feel, the rhythmic notes that we're playing. One, four, five. One, five, four. What I added there, the last spice to the cooking that we're making here in terms of seven bass, is after I went to the four, I created a line, or you could call it a riff, that landed me back to the five here. For those of you who understand your bass, your music theory, all I did was I did like a walk down or walk up, depending on how you're looking at it. Press the two here, the D. C1, 6, 5. And these lines are very common in 7 bass. Finally. 
guys I click I play the C on the top line here you see I'm starting to create variations which is why it's important to know how to play the bass already because you can use the notes from the different octaves and someone who knows their way around the bass you could do something like this for example see that I came all the way down here because I know how to play the C here you see I'm starting to create a little variation but all of this is founded on the basic and the most important technique which is the thump with the pivot knowing how to do that so the last thing I want to do now is show you how this baseline progression that we've developed step by step can be played now with a band so you can see what it sounds like Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you've taken some time to practice what I've been doing up to now. Now I'm going to take you through a development, through a demonstration of what we've done. So we're going to play each section that we practice and I'm going to show you how it sounds like when you're playing with the live band. So you'll get to see the progression and the development of the bass lines while I'm playing with the band. So band, let's go. So I'm going to start off with a simple one. Let me show you what it's going to be. Okay, can the band join me now? With the drummer first. first thing we did now the next thing that I showed you guys was a slight development from that which was so you see now going to the final phase of our baseline development I'm going to play for you again so you can hear how it sounds and then I'll try out the band in this final phase, this is where we've added all the elements that we've been looking at, practicing, and now we're putting it all together to make our playing pretty more interesting than we did at the beginning. So hear how it sounds like without the band, then I'll get the band to play along with me. Band, can you play with me so I can sh demonstrate? Two. have it guys our workshop and seven is done i hope you've enjoyed your time here remember practice get the thumb get the thumb correctly and you'll have the essence of seven bits congolese musician joe kiembe is a multi-instrumentalist and is an artist who's been commissioned by amani go digital to produce an online workshop for bass players who would like to learn the Congolese Seben genre. Hi Job, we've met before in several occasions on yes, several Amani yes. projects. Indeed. So um, how did you first get involved with Amani Creatives? Um, I can't remember who contacted me first, but a couple of people that I know from the community were already involved with Amani before I got involved in. Um, even people like Emanuela, like one of the key people, part of Amani's organization, I've known her since years ago, you know, from church, gigs, conventions, etc. So um, I think it was one of them who invited me, asked me if I could take part in a gig that was being played. This was about five years ago. So that's when I really got involved with Omani, five years ago now, yeah. And you play quite a lot of instruments, don't you? Well, mainly two instruments. I've okay. played a couple of others. So which, which, which are, what instruments do you play and which are your preferred instruments? My main instruments are bass guitar and the keyboard or piano. But when I first started playing music, 
I started on the drums first. I used to be a drummer for church. Then I learned the bass around 2006. From the bass, I transitioned to the keyboard. After the keyboard, I transitioned to the guitar. <laughs> but the transition to the guitar was me by myself, independent. But my main instrument for the last 13 years has been the piano and the bass guitar. So those are my two preferred instruments. Who have been your influences? Oh, there's many influences in terms of music. There's first my community influences. Um, another musician has actually been part of Amani for a long time, Brother Chepe. You know, when I used to, when I started music, he was one of the people I used to look up to because he was actually friends with my music teacher, the guy who taught me music and taught me bass guitar. They were actually quite friends. And then when I got to hear him play, and he had a very interesting style of playing, and he was also playing beyond the Congolese music himself, you know, playing the blues, the jazz, and then, so I always looked up to him. He was one of my key influences in terms of the community. And then there are other guys I also played part in my development. But in terms of like other styles like gospel music, getting to the jazz, I had a group of other friends in other communities, Nigeria, Ghana, etc. That's where we'd practice and play the black American gospel music. But there's been several influences, but these are some of the key ones. So when did you first realize that you wanted to do music more seriously? Um, I first started playing the drums in church. I, don't, I can't remember exactly why, I just did. <laughs> I used to play drums in church. This was around 2004, predominantly. And there was one time we wanted to play an event in Newcastle with my parents. And after that conference, just church conference, we played at. At the end of it, they found me, I dropped the guitar, and then I was just playing and jamming on it. So they realized that, oh, he's really interested in music. So after that, they then decided to find someone who can formally teach me how to play music. I was actually playing the guitar, but they got someone to teach me the bass guitar instead. So that's when I started to learn the bass uh, in terms of properly and formally being taught, you know, learning basic music theory, practicing songs. You know. So yeah, that's when it really started. And as I understand it, yeah. music is really important in the Congolese church. Yes. Is it kind of like a mentorship that goes on with young people in the church? Um, there is. It's not a formal, but it's just mm. indirect. And the, the way we learn music is more about the cultural upbringing. Mm. You know, the kind of music we listen to, the kind of music we play in church. It's excitement and people are very involved in terms of how they react to the music that's being played, which is also part of the motivation for getting better and growing and developing, so yeah. So who do you listen to at home? I listen to all sorts of music. I mean, I listen to mainstream, I listen to underground, so it will depend by style of music. So for example, let's say we're talking pop music, I listen to any pop artist that are about, I don't know, from Beyonce to Rihanna, to the rap, hip hop, to Jay-Z, the Kanye West, etc to the Neo Soul, people like Erica Badu, you have Jill Scott, and there's also this lady called Ameria Loria, not very well known, but Neo Soul music from back in the late 90s, early 2000s. There's all sorts, you get into jazz, and then uh, I listen to more instrumentalists when it comes to jazz, people like Oscar Peterson, one of the great jazz pianists, I listen to him, you got like Joe Paz, so I listen to all sorts. And there's also Congolese artists that I listen to, there's Nigerian artists that I listen to in terms of Afrobeat, I like a wide variety of music, like there's not one particular style that I listen to at home. It depends on what mood and how I feel. So you were commissioned as an artist for the Imani Go Digital and you decided to, to run a music workshop. Yeah. So what made you come up with that idea? The idea? Um, well, when I was contacted, I was told about the proposition that in terms of what kind of projects you can do. And the idea came up about doing something about the Congolese style of music, seven, which we, it's very predominantly played in now uh, Congolese music culture. It's what we're known for in terms of the Congolese people, seven style of music. And I thought, yeah, I'd like to do it for two reasons, because um, I've noticed that even on YouTube, because I've got friends from other nations or musicians, or they've asked me before about how to play seven, you know, play the events, play the gigs, like how do you play, what do you do? I teach them and I'll tell them a bit the basic but even on YouTube the tutorials aren't that great a lot of them have told me like the tutorials even on YouTube are not that great mm -hmm. because seven style of music is we don't learn it formally like you know in the west here some people can go to school and learn classical music and learn jazz music you're taught formally 
I taught the music theory, I taught the chord structure, etc. But with seven, it's fundamentally about feeling. Mm -hmm. So you learn about intuition, you learn about interacting at the events with people, with the music you listen to and how people react to it. And that's how you start to develop a sense of how you're supposed to play the music. So what is seven? If you had to describe what, exactly what it is, obviously it means seven, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the word seven means. Okay. I just know that's the word we use to describe the style of music. But seven is fundamentally a rhythmic kind of music. So it's like duh, 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 yeah. Duh, duh, yeah, it's duh, all duh. about rhythm. Yeah, yeah, seven is yeah. fundamentally about rhythm. Where it came from is basically, especially like back in Africa in terms of like the rural areas, the reverend rhythmic individuals in terms of the kind of music they create, obviously in terms of the harmonies, more of the vocals, but the guitars, etc. But it's mm -hmm. fundamental rhythmic style of music based on the conga. Mm -hmm. And then the way that the conga is played was transferred to the drums. And then those are the key elements. It's more fundamentally rhythmic. Mm. The melody, etc., all of that was built on top in terms of years later on with electronic music coming in. You can play the keyboard as well, the mm -hmm. guitar, but it's fundamentally rhythmic. So is it the distinctive drum style that you hear in Suku's music? Yes. Because it, it feels like that as soon as you start playing it. Yes, it is. Suku's yeah. is actually the, an earlier form of Seven. Seven has actually gone through an evolution in the last 30 years, so mm -hmm. Suku is like the original kind of seven that became mainstream. And then what we're gonna try and demonstrate here is more of like the modern sound of seven. And who is the workshop aimed at? The workshop is aimed at first people. You have to already know how to play the bass because <laughs> we're not starting from scratch in terms of teaching you the bass. So you should know your way around the bass, the notes, the scales, particularly the major scale, know your keys and then Mm -hmm. If you know how to play the bass already, that's fine. Then we can develop from that, mm -hmm. talk about the seven technique and how do we then build our seven bass lines. And are you, be ab are you able to, to run a complete workshop in the half hour that you're going to run it or is it the start of a, a series of it's workshops? It's the start because I got to think a lot about seven this year because I go back to practice um, on my seven bass this year in particular. And I realized that there's so much that goes on into seven. It's so for most people who are trained musicians, when they listen to it, there's nothing complicated really going on. But when they have to try to play, it's difficult <laughs> because it's the simplicity that kind of hides like where the feel of seven comes so, from. So it's almost like a swing <laughs> of the yes. congo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's very simple in terms of the structure, yeah, what's yeah. going on. But what's difficult to capture about seven is the feel because you can tell someone easily what to do, what to play, but that doesn't translate into playing it in the way that it should sound right. and creating the feel that it should feel. And one of the things I want to explain through this tutorial is how to capture the feel. It's the beginning. Mm -hmm. There are some people that have played seven for years. They have, they can capture the feel to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but the really top, top musician have really mastered that craft in terms of how they play, the way they create the sound and feel that makes seven what it makes. So is this workshop reflecting on what you want to do in the future? I mean, do you want to perform more? Do you want to run more workshops or um, all of these things? In terms of running more, I would like to do a bit more workshop, create stuff because I like teaching, helping people, translating ideas. Because the thing about workshop or teaching is about the way you learn is different to how people can learn so you want to translate an understanding in a form that people can comprehend they can digest them, and then they can apply what you're teaching them yeah so, so how can people find out more about you but more they, about me yeah do you have any website I or do. Facebook? the main place where i post any kind of thing related to music is on my instagram <laughs> so facebook i'm really inactive i just use it to connect with family and friends so is it Instagram. your Instagram is under your name, is it? Yeah, if you search my full name, Job Kayembe, you'll be able to find my Instagram. The name might be JM Kayembe, so yeah, Job Kayembe, you should be able to find me. Fantastic. I have a picture of myself on the keyboard, so it won't be hard to notice. Thank you so much for talking to us. No problem, you're welcome. Yeah, my look pleasure. forward to seeing what comes next. Looking forward to it too.